Guys, here we have our T-34. This is the tank of the Second World War. Forget your Panzers, forget your Shermans. This is the guy that did all the killing. This is the most populous tank of the Second World War. 57,000, I believe, were made of them. And they did the fighting, where the real fighting went on, on the Russian front. I believe 45 Germans that died, died on the Russian front. So this is where the real battle went on. Huge, big, wide open, the steppe of Russia. Huge, big, wide open area. Great room for great tank battles. T-34, as far as I remember, came in 1941. Uh, in this box, you have the 76 and the 85. The 76 was the early version of it. It wasn't the most... It wasn't the easiest to use tank. You needed another crew member, but it wasn't built for that. It was only built for two to work the gun. Really, you need three. Once they went moved up to the 85... You get the third man in there, and it became even more effective. But by that stage, they were spanking the Germans anyway. Zukov had taken over, and he was just smacking the Germans. He always wanted Stalin, I believe, said about him. He always wanted more kit, and but he never lost a battle. So this is what he did it with, T-34. We'll get a look at this and see what we get. In this box, we get five. Would you believe T-34s, the 85s, are still in use today? Yeah, they were still built until about 1980, 81. In our box, we get main part of our tank. This is where our turret goes on. We get a little bit here, it goes on the back. We have various hatches, and we have a little man to stick his head out to your tank commander. Normally, driving along, moseying up the battlefield. Yeah, you could sit with your head out, but whenever the actual fighting started, you close that hatch and you get your head in there because you don't want to be the... The guy down there with his head stuck out. You have your two guns here. You have your 76 and your 85. The thing the 85 is so much bigger is the longer your barrel is, the more accuracy you're going to have. Short barrel, less accuracy, not so good. You have your little machine gun here and you have your little mountain. Here is your two hatches, your two turrets. This would be for your 85 and that would be for your 76. 76 was small and cramped even for two men and uh, wasn't the easiest to work once you moved up you get three men in there it works so much better uh, i believe 44 the 85 come in you get the big one here we have base the bottom of your tank wheels spare bit of track here some barrels and things to mount on your tank and a couple other bits of not exactly sure what them bits do but i'll take a guess they were anti-ghost bars. Nah, I don't know, guys. We'll see whenever I start building them. Here we have the other set of wheels, and here we have all your tracks on it. All in all, you have five of these sprues, guys. If you want to see me review each sprue, just wind that back and play it again. Guys, I'm going to go now and build some of these T-34s and... Uh, We'll see you in the second half of the video. Guys, I have our T-34 built. This here one is the 85. Uh, basically, each set you get five in the box and each set you can build an 85 or the 76 but basically it's as easy as that so if you want depending on what period of the war you're planning to play you can just swap the barrels about it is that simple there's none of this you have to buy a 75 then or 76 then you have to buy an 85 you just get both of them in the one box i haven't stuck any little barrels around on i've just built you your bog standard tank and you can decorate it however you want you can decorate it in any of the various countries half the middle eastern countries of these if you wanted to use them in some game system do a six days war you could use them in that game system pretty much uh the tank itself it is surprisingly no i'm not gonna say difficult to build but it's not the easiest little thing to build you know some of the pieces are you have to be careful with but it goes together it has relatively few pieces the 
not the entire tank, it's hard to bolt, it's just getting the tracks correct. Even on this one, I'd have to stick a little bit of green stuff in the back of my tracks. We've got little bits of gap here in the back of my track. This guy, you can have him on pointing out, but I don't know why he's pointing because nobody in the tank would be able to see what direction he's pointing at, unless he's pointing for the other tank commanders to see of the other four that you get in the box along with this guy. But it's a great little tank. The Russian front, as I've said, is my favourite. The Russians had a, I don't know if I said this first half of the video, they had a vodka allowance. It's no wonder they like to drive tanks. They had a vodka allowance each day, I believe, if I remember correctly. They got a half a pint of vodka per man, not per tank, per man, per day. So if you're going out to battle, you drink your vodka in the morning and it'll make you a bit brave. Because as I remember listening to an interview with a Russian tank commander or Russian tank driver he may have been saying that uh, it was pointless leaving your vodka to the evening because you might not be there to drink it in the evening. So even if you just got wounded you would get away taken back to the hospital and you wouldn't get to drink your vodka in the evening. So on the day of a battle get tanked up with vodka. I love that system. That's just a great system. I must get on to Warren. Everybody send Warren a message and tell him Daryl should get half a pint of vodka in the morning. That would also go with my bottle of rum, so that would be good. So, yes, the Russians fought very bravely. They would even use these tanks to ram the enemy because closer to the end of the war, Germans kept building bigger and bigger and stronger and stronger tanks. John, I believe, was one of these tanks that was so big and so strong, it didn't work most of the time because it was too heavy. Gravity took over and it was just too fat to move. That, uh, but... These guys would have fired all their shells and rammed the bugger. And that shows how brave you are since the driver is at the front. If it was me, I'd have turned around and reversed into him. But <laughs> that's only up to me. Guys, I like the little tank. I think the little tank would be nice, easily, easily painted. There's not too many little footery points that I would say would be terribly hard to do. If I'd had more time, I'd have built you a full set of five and we could have looked at five in a row but if you really really want to see five in a row just open up five windows in your computer and look at this video simultaneously five times and you'll have your five tanks i'm only joking guys they're nice little tank no no bother in them i am more of a fan than this than the resin metal ones you get plastic is king as far as i am concerned and anybody that builds anything out of plastic is my friend so guys have you got these? Are they good little tanks? Have you ever driven a T-34? Have you ever fired the gun on a T-34? Don't care about the rest of them pussy tanks, just a T-34. Stick some comments in below and I'll get on to another video.